Behind the sewing machine is Hamdia, the 28-year-old junior high school graduate and a mother of one. Her dream of becoming a teacher was shattered when she was forcefully married off to a 33-year-old man by her father. She was barely 19 years old at the time. As a determined young woman who wanted to break from the shackles of a weary housewife, Hamdia escaped and headed to the south. She landed at Sankori in the Den Bono Ahafo region. I went there because of money. Me, when I get money, I'll come back and even join a private school to move myself on. But unfortunately, when I went there, life wasn't going well. It was difficult because I was at Cottage. The place that we was, it was Cottage. I did very difficult. Even cry in a day, you can't even get food to eat. The people that I was staying with, though they are poor, they were also so poor. They have managed myself there because due to they were just there suffering. So I just managed myself because I'm used to that. So I just managed myself. Even but did you know these people before you went there? I don't know them. When I was going, on the way in car that I saw that girl and I friended her. She asked me that where am I going? Even though I even asked her where where that she's going, that she's going to their his, uh, her parents at some point. The story of Hamdia mirrors the situation of thousands of young people who migrate to the south in search of non existing jobs. Most migrant girls become headquarters known as Kayai, while the boys engage in laborious and hazardous jobs without adequate shelter. Abuabo, a suburb of Kumasi, is a popular destination for most migrants from the north. Here we come face to face with the inhuman conditions that these girls live in. These makeshift structures are home to thousands of young girls who pay a weekly rent of 10 cities each. <laughs> Despite the unimaginable structures these girls live in, they often get pregnant doubling their plight and perpetuating the conditions that got them there. Although internal migration cuts across all regions in Ghana, the Ghana Statistical Service ranks the northern region among the highest contributors of rural urban migration at 13%. Transport operators back in Tamale shed light on the phenomenon of migration. A lot of them are migrating from Tamale to Accra, not even only Tamale, from Boku, Boga, and other areas within the northern sector. Sometimes we have 30, yeah, 30 passengers, whereas all, all of them are youth. Yes, especially the girls. While at the bus terminal, our camera caught 25 year old Khadija, not her real name. She was waiting to board a bus to Accra. I completed SS 2015. Then I've tried to rewrite, but it wasn't working out for me. I've stayed here for some time now. And it was it's not moving on. I try then I want to go to a crime. See if I can do something. I don't know. I don't know what is going to happen there, but I just want to I I, I also want a future for myself. Across the street at another bus terminal, 16-year-old Faustina walks past me with a heavy backpack. In a conversation with her, it was immediately clear that she too was heading to Accra. 
her innocent smile betraying her expectations of opportunities ahead of her. I'm going to Ankara with my sister. My sister is sharing rush. I'll go and help her. My mother asked me to go, my sister to give me money to come. And if I help her, she will give me some money to keep it. If the motive for traveling to the south is to amass wealth, did people like Hamdia return with a basket full? When I was coming back, in fact, the money that I was having to come back, just God just brought me back to my place. So when you went and you were working for the people, how much were they paying you? Five city. He did five city. And even for the five city, they did not even pay you. Two to three days, you know, pay you. And that five city, I buy so everything, my pad, everything. I use that five city and buy. So due to three days, you no pay me. So where will I get money and buy soap and the, the things I want? Or to even save the money that I wanted to save and go back to my country. The northern region has huge arable land suitable for agriculture, which could be used as a source of livelihood. But most youth in the region still prefer to move out to the cities for alternative source of income. We depend on rain-fed agriculture, whereby we have only out of the 12 months within a calendar year, we have four months that we have rain. The eight months left, you see that the young people really want to work, but there are no jobs. So you see that they will move to down south to be scavenging for jobs, and these jobs were not there. Meanwhile, government and non-governmental organizations have initiated some interventions like the Livelihood Empowerment Against Poverty, Ghana Social Opportunities Project to tackle poverty, which many say is the reason they flee. It does not seem to be yielding its intended results. The Northern Regional Director for Social Welfare, Prosper Oye, thinks the cause of youth migration goes beyond poverty. Responsibility, how responsible are the parents? And that is the crux of the issue. Most of the parents are not responsible. The one people to take care of the children for them, the one the state to be responsible for child care. But child care is essentially a family business. The state comes in as a secondary issue, partner. The, the, the primary responsibility of child care is hangs on the parents and not the state. The state will come to complement your efforts, right? So parents need to uphold the rights of the child. The director of the African Development for Migration, AFDOM, Mukaila Aminu, agrees with Mr. Oye's view that Parental irresponsibility is largely to blame for the state of affairs. As parents, the responsibility starts from parents. If you are not ready to be a father, then you should not follow the process of becoming a father. The child didn't force you to bring him on earth. It is your wish and will that you too brought the child. At least you should have shoulder the responsibility to ensure that the child has a future. However, Mr. Mukaila insists that equipping these young ones such as Hamdia with skills will reduce the rate of rural urban drift. After Hamdia's adventure from the south, she encountered Abdo, where she is currently learning tailoring as a trade. And this is her advice for young people who intend to migrate to the south. The talent is there, but we don't have supporters. That is our problem. That is our problem in Tamale here. I know most of my friends, they are there suffering. And to be frankly, you can't go to Accra and you can't involve yourself in prostitution. You can't do that. You may get someone with your side and you'll be getting whatever you want from the man and he'll also be using you. Policy must be deliberate in dealing with the problem. For City News, I am Dinah Ungwan, reporting from Tamale.